it's Dave here. Welcome to Centurion's Review, the punk rock band of war game review institutions. This is Moonbase Clavius uh, Task Force game. It's from the 1980s. Mo from Mo's Game Table did a unboxing of the modern version of this. This was uh, reprinted by the author, I think by Micro Game Design Group. So he was asking me what the components look like in the original. So I told him I'd do a, an unboxing so everyone can see the, um, the components. All right, so it's Lunar War 1996. The Soviet attack on the American moon base in the crater Clavius was launched early on October 27th and reached the American base early on October 28th. The Soviets, with the advantage of surprise, were able to accomplish the majority of their initial objectives. The American forces were pushed back to the perimeter of Clavius. The Soviets were now racing against the clock. It was essential to capture the American colonies before the Marines could arrive. They pulled up their nuclear mortars and began the day-long siege. The Americans had expected a Soviet push on the moon for some time. In response, they had developed the 1st Marine Corps Specialized Battalion. These men were an elite all-volunteer force specially trained to fight in low-G and pressure suits. Armed with the latest laser rifles and able to drop to the moon's surface from an orbiting shuttle, the Marines were considered the best fighting force of the day. They were to prove this title in battle as they dropped to the rescue with their nuclear mortars and lunar tanks. All right, let's see what's going on here. It says Moon Base Clavis has three scenarios in a campaign game. That's good. Always nice when a micro game has more than one scenario. Uh, playing time 30 minutes to an hour. Complexity moderate and designer Kerry Anderson. Yeah, he's the guy I believe who owns Micro Game Design Group now. All right, let's see what's in here. All right, let's take a look at the counters. Counters are typical for 1980s micro game counters. Actually, they're not bad for the 1980s, especially micro game counters. I've seen far worse. They're okay. So, uh, it looks like they're just single sided. It looks like it's got infantry mortars. I'm not sure what that is. And some kind of uh, vehicles here. I assume they're armored vehicles or something in the game turn marker. And let's take a look at the map. It's actually a fairly decent sized map for a micro game. Usually they're smaller than this. Let me see if I can pull this up so I can get the whole map into view. Looks like it's got these craters, uh, a bunch of them named, and I don't know if these are installations or what these are here, but looks like a map of the moon. Actually, for the night for a 1980s map, it's not bad. There's Clavius. I've seen that through my telescope. Any of these other craters I recognize by name? Tico, that I recognize. Everyone, I've seen that in my telescope too. Alright, when I was young I used to use telescopes a lot, I was in the, one of the million hobbies I had at the time was uh, amateur astronomy, I've had so many hobbies over the years. <laughs> Alright, let's see the rule book here, rule book is 18 pages, last two pages there's a train effects chart, and there's also a combat results table. Wouldn't be a bad idea to try and photocopy those so you have a player's aid to hand to the other player too so they don't have to share the book. And it's shown here for the mortars, it's got a bombardment strength and a movement allowance and the regular infantry has a combat strength and a movement allowance. Each hex in the map is 17.2 uh, miles and each turn represents four and a half hours. And here's the turn sequence, combat phase, movement phase, reinforcement phase, and then second player turn, which I assume is the same, uh, they have their combat, movement, and reinforcement. So it's a simple uh, combat results table. It's got the unit designations here. And it's going into detail on movement, movement conditions and prohibitions, zones of control, effects on movement, stacking, Use of nuclear weapons on the moon causes a concentration of troops to be extremely dangerous. A maximum of three units uh, can stack, and a stacking limit applies at the end of movement. And that's going over combat. 
which units can attack, bombardment, and affects the terrain on combat and combat resolution. And adva oh, there's advancement after combat. Okay, and nuclear mortars. I assume those are probably pretty deadly. And self-propelled batteries. I guess that's what those vehicles were. Those are batteries. Oh, so this stuff on the map is a monorail system. Oh, okay, that's cool. That's really cool. Looks like the Soviet Brigade headquarters, uh, in addition to being a combat unit, is also a source of resupply. And you can destroy the monorail system. And there's an optional desperate attack rules. And there's an engineer unit, which is optional. And here's the scenario. So the actual rules are 11 pages, and they're small. So it should be really easy to learn the game. Actually, it looks cool. And the scenarios, uh, the first one is the initial Soviet attack. Followed by the siege of Clavius. And then the Marines land. And then there's a campaign game. That's cool. Yeah, it doesn't look bad for an old uh, 1980s micro game. Anyhow, thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please click like on it. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to this channel. And as always, have a good evening.